All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. It's a big day. I finally got my Edelbrock heads back, and they are glorious. I'm going to show you in this video how you can improve your Edelbrock heads, especially if they say out of the box, ready to bolt on. And you can basically do any of this stuff to any new aluminum heads that you buy. So let's check it out. There's the part number of these Edelbrock heads. It is the E Street 5090 Big Block Chrysler 75cc Chamber. And it says they were a complete pair. So these were uh, designed to bolt on for a hydraulic flat tappet cam. I think good to 500 lift or something like that. So we made them more suitable for my 400 engine that uh, I'm actually running a hydraulic roller cam with solid roller lifters in. Let me show you the heads. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is how smooth and nice the chambers look. They've been polished. So Ed at E&D Machine did all the work on these heads for me. I was able to go over and help him just a little bit. Um, and those chambers are now polished up. They were kind of a rough cast. I don't know if you can see kind of the finish of that there. That's basically what the finish looked like. I'll show you a before picture too. Um, so he did polish up the chambers, but before he did that, uh, he actually were, was able to deshroud the valves. So I've got my head gasket stuck in here to show you. And I want to show you that whole process. Um, I've got some good video footage here, but basically what we did, um, we blew it up all the way around here with a um, compressed gasket and then took his scribe and scribe lines all the way there. And then he set up in his machine and was able to cut. So cutting that back, you'll see in the video, uh, that allows for the low lift flow to be better because when that valve comes up just slightly, as soon as it starts coming, it can flow on, around those edges as well. So definitely a huge improvement. Y'all check out what that looks like in the process. You can get to our line right here of the, of the scribe line of the head gasket. So that's, that's it, that's maximum. The rest of this will have to work by hand, but you can notice how far we are off that wall right there. Mm -hmm. So. We're just getting our first cut up here, Joe. We're watching for our contact line. We're right inside the contact line, Joe. This is so much better than trying to have to do this by hand. Because these are all exactly the same diameter radius off of the valve guide. You can see we're cutting a fair amount. But see now, when that moves up just a little bit, you can see it's gonna start moving air. And it's got a significant margin all the way around the valve. Starting to come in and form a radius now. It laid that radius right in along our line there. And we laid that out exactly the way we laid your other head out. Dow pins in the dow pin holes gave us a good datum. Yeah. So there you go. And we can't quite clean up the steps that Edelbrock left, but we sure did a good job. And when we do the chamber job, we'll we'll roll this back and we'll fix that. You know, because this was a tight, this was the tightest area in the head right here. You know? Yeah. So we have exactly everywhere where that was in that radius or arc, it is now all the same distance. We've established that. Gasket on after the cut.
Yeah, I know some people ask. Intake. Wayne, what do you think the chamber job is for in a horsepower on this? 45? So after that process, the thing that scares most people is that it does take away a little bit of metal inside of here. So it does add some cc's to the inside of your chamber but what you pick up in flow uh, greatly outweighs that little bit of cc that you lost these heads also if you can see the cut finish on them i'm not sure if i can even get the camera there you go see those tiny little lines set these up in his comic and was able to shave them i only elected to go ten thousandths just to clean them up when i got these heads in the mail uh they had a kind of a damaged spot, like on a, a nick on the corner here, side. And I'll show you that process of us setting them up and shaving them as well. Ed has our Edelbrock head leveled up in his Comex. We're trying to cut a little damage, y'all, that happened during shipping. And we'll see what that takes it to. And whenever that happens, whatever that comes out to, we're going to cut the same amount off the other head. Hopefully, y'all follow along. Ain't that right, Ed? Yes, sir. So this is our first full pass, right? Yeah. You can see we've got stuck paint. Look here. Not touching. We've got all places out through here. You can kind of see that superficial chatter. Look here. Never even touched that at all. Wow. Yeah, it looks just... our damage spot. Making a full pass all the way through. Check out this side. I think our damage is gone. So we need to add off what we got on the dial, we'll add about a foul. So that cleaned up in about three fouls. This is Ed's rough cut and it still looks way better than the factory deal that Edelbrock came with. This is wonderful. The final product. There you go, friends. What we like to see. Now we can talk about some port work here. This is the exhaust port, uh, just flipped over so you can see in there. That's been polished up a lot. Most of the casting flash was taken off and um, blended from the inside as well. So you'll, you'll get to see some pictures here of the valve job. So just doing that outside work does help slightly, but the biggest gains and flow in this, I believe, were the work that he did to the valve job. The Exhaust valves on this have a full radius. So I can show you pictures of that, what it kind of looks like. Full radius flowing all the way in. As soon as the valve opens, it kind of flows over and in. Greatly increasing flow uh, for that exhaust to get out on the intake port. So here is the floor of our intake port. This head's actually flipped over. And you can see just how nice that port work is. Um, there, there probably wasn't a lot of metal removed, but a lot of smoothing and blending, that sort of deal coming off that valve job and the short side radius. Um, if you want to see a different angle of it, here it is. I mean, there's, they look way better in person than you could ever imagine. Um, goes right in, see it off that side. And you can see just a little bit of that roughness there. That's that's what the inside of that port looks like everywhere. So in theory, that could be knocked all the way out and down. But um, most people agree that you don't want your intake ports to be too smooth as it helps for the atomization of fuel. But that's what they look like. It's super nice. Intake ports have been ported. Uh, we got our spring set up here. And before I show you the spring set up, I'll explain to you, this does have a now five angle intake valve job. I have pictures and video of it. 
So really smoothed up a nice transition to transition. What are we looking for, Ed? We're uh, looking for precision. Every time. A little low place over here. A light top cut, narrower seat back. I wish I had to do this. I would have seen it, but this is just that much more precision than machine cutting the seats. And we're trying to get the most, uh, we check our diameter here. You can look at that and get a close-up on them. Here you see our springs are set up with the new Viton, Viton seals, however you want to call them, um, intake and exhaust, and these are springs for a hydraulic roller cam. They are uh, crane cam springs I got from Mr. Rodney Bird. Um, but he had to hone the valve guides on all these. They were too tight. So if you have too tight of a valve guide, um, you know, and Edelbrock is, I guess, kind of having poor quality control or whatever issues. And a lot of just out of the box, new heads with that big manufacturing process, uh, they're doing stuff quick and dirty. So these were literally dirty. If you go back and watch my old video, uh, Wayne was, had pulled out a big section of dirt and funk out of the valve guides. But these have been honed, they've been cleaned up, and uh, proper clearance springs set up on here. And the uh, valves themselves have actually been back cut. Um, so I've got some good grinding video of it. Hopefully you can check it out. It's about seven, eight thousand. Here, what we're going to do, we're doing this second angle, and this happens to be 45, the face. This is 30 degrees. So we're going to go in there gently. So we don't mi so there you go. We're just right above that area. See there? Mm -hmm. There you go. I think I think that'll give us a pattern what to shoot for. Yep. So we'll just do them now. We'll just do them all the same. We're back to about zero. You have to go slow because you know you're grinding against a sharp corner. And kind of one of the final steps in the process, uh, Ed was able to CC one chamber in each head for me. And that was um, a, a good benefit just so I can figure my final compression ratio. Uh, this one came out to 75.6. And I believe this one is 76 CC. So that was one chamber to one chamber. So that does not mean that this chamber is the same as that chamber. I didn't, I, I didn't request that he have uh, check every chamber in the heads as that's pretty time consuming. But uh, what, what you can read online and even Joe Mondello says, if they're within uh, half a cc or one cc, uh, they're totally acceptable. So this is super great work um, on these heads, on Ed's part. Uh, I appreciate all the work he's put into them. It's really, I think it's going to help that 400 do really well in my old Barracuda here. So I'm, I'm appreciative of that work. Um, I'm proud I finally have a set of heads I can actually bolt on. Uh, kind of going into this, my lesson was learned. I, 
I knew that you couldn't bolt stuff right on out of the box, even though they claim that you can. Um, and I'll kind of, I'll, I'll have a better process for planning in the future. Um, I might, if I had to, all this to do over again, I would probably start with just a bare set of heads, like a Speedmaster or a um, Pro Comp or whatever casting, and drop that off at Ed's and say, get me the, get me the valves I need, the springs, uh, retainers, locks, and all that. I appreciate y'all watching. Hopefully you're following along with the 400 build series I'm doing. And I'm trying to get 500 horse out of just a stock stroke, stock crank, 400. Um, I'll share more details of that as it comes. So I appreciate y'all watching and I'll catch you next time.